to highlight new funding mechanisms being explored in the design space of blockchain and open source, please welcome founder and CEO of Gitcoin, Kevin Owaki. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Owaki. I am one of the co-founders of Gitcoin. And um, I'm here representing Colorado, Shill Colorado, uh, as meetup organizer of the Boulder blockchain meetup based out of Boulder, Colorado. And I would not be here without Consensus, which is the primary financial backer of our project. I am here to today to talk about open source software sustainability and why blockchain is a new hope for open source sustainability. When I talk about open source software, I'm talking about software in which there's a release of the source code, royalty-free redistribution of the program, and modifications retain the original software license as they propagate through the internet. So who should care about open source software? Well, open source software has eaten the world. 96% of applications use open source software. Many of the companies that you use every day use open source software to power their digital economy. Depends on the industry that you're in, but anywhere from 10% to 90% of the code in your code base is likely open source software, with an average of 57% of code being from open source software. There was a study that was done about 10 years ago in 2008 that said that $400 billion of economic value is created per year from open source software. That's 10 years ago before the invention of Bitcoin and before, op before crypto networks existed. So surely the number is much higher than it is uh, today. And this is equivalent to about 27x the market cap of ETH as it stands right now. So I think that the impact of open source software is unequivocal. And uh, if you're a software developer, if you're a data scientist, if you're a designer, then you should care about open source software. And if you're not one of those people, if you're trying to create a digital product, then you're going to need to work with those type of people. And so you should care about open source and open source sustainability, because the people that you need in order to be successful in digital software care about open source sustainability. One of the most amazing things about open source, though, is that it's all available online for free. So let's take a quick look at what motivates us to work on open source software. Open source has been around since the 90s, and people have contributed it to it for a lot of reasons, both extrinsic and intrinsic. Anything from being a personal hobby to just being a way that you can learn by doing to altruistic reasons are, are why people contribute to open source. There's also extri extrinsic reasons, and you've seen the rise of this, especially with networks like GitHub, that offer peer recognition, career advancement, or say, speaking at a conference for contributing to open source software. But there is a problem, and it manifests in the form of black swan events that are a result of our reliance on open source software, but the inability for us to fund open source software uh, uh, to fund open source software to the amount that it creates value. So there's an example about four years ago called the Heartbleed bug, which was a bug in OpenSSL. OpenSSL is the software that powers the secure internet, that little lock in the top left of your web browser. And the OpenSSL server is built by the OpenSSL Foundation, which runs on less than $2,000 per year in donations and a million dollars in contract work. And what that bug did was it dumped the contents of your secure server, the memory, to the open internet. For those of you who are not technical, that is a bad thing for security. And so uh, I think that this is a result of open source not being funded to the amount that it creates value in the world. And in order to illustrate that point, I want to talk about the funnel of open source maintainers life cycle. So you start off as a contributor and you get the response from the community that this is pretty cool, we really enjoy your work. But as the software gets more adopted and the novelty wears off, people start to rely on it, but they don't support you as the maintainer. And you get comments like, this is cool, but can you make it do X? Or 
the even worse part as your software gets more adopted is the entitledness that comes from, I've reported this bug, why haven't you fixed it yet? Well, the answer is that no one's paying me to do this and I'm spending, not spending time with my family in order to fix your bug. So people end up getting burned out from, from their work in, in contributing and they give away uh, access maintainer rights to their repo and I think that that's an unequivocally bad thing. So, uh, and this is expressed in the number of maintainers that most projects have. There's this metric called the truck factor which basically is the number of people who have to get hit by a truck in order for a project to go away. And 65% of open source projects, our entire digital infrastructure, have a truck factor of two people or less. I think that is unacceptable and that is why uh, we're working on Gitcoin. So how do we fundle our projects? <laughs> have we run the course on the whole Biddle and Hoddle thing? Hopefully this will put a death knell in it. So what has been tried before, uh, we tried asking cloud platform providers who use on open source software massively more than anyone else. We've tried to ask them nicely to pay for their use of open source software. We have tried putting donation buttons on our platforms. We've tried using bounties. We've tried using open core. There's, there's 20 years of prior art in open source sustainability and it hasn't really had a ton of effect. And that's expressed in this chart that says that the top methods of funding open source software <laughs> is self-funding or no funding, or an employer, or consulting. So it's not really working. I think that we can do better. And I think that you should have hope that this is going to change. And it's because of the design space of blockchain and open source software. So from first principles, we value open source software. And with programmable money, we can program our values into our money and therefore we can make open source profitable to maintain. The internet brought a thousand X use of information services to the world. Before the internet, you would never send a postcard to your coworker a few cubes down and ask them if they wanna go get lunch with you, but you would send that IM today because it's faster and cheaper to send information messages because of the internet. And I think that if there's a thousand X use of financial services, then we can have a breakthrough application of finance that's fundamentally new and native to the internet of money that's going to support open source. And the tangible reason why it's gonna change is that there's 100 to $900 billion in market cap of these crypto networks and they're all looking for software developers. They all need to bring software developers into their ecosystem. They all need to fund open source software and Everything is increasingly built as open source. So all the money that used to go to some back office on Wall Street is now going to open source software and that's gonna change how we fund software development. The dream for us at Gitcoin is that Gitcoin becomes a Swiss army knife that solves this problem. And we view this as a funnel. So the open source contributor life cycle that I told you about, the burnout life cycle, means that most people use open source software but they rarely contribute to it or maintain it. So the engineer in me loves the optimization problem here. We just create a crypto economic force that accelerates what's working in open source software, and then we just decelerate what's not working. It's simple, it's an optimization problem. Gitcoin's way of doing this is as a double-sided market that connects people who fund open source software to coders who need funding for their open source software. And they're trading access to the developers for things that have financial value. And we've got fresh POW on both sides of the market. That's just what we call inventory in Colorado. Uh, the dev community being on the coder side, we've got 20K software developers that are looking to work on your software development uh, repos. And we've got money that we've bundled from the EF consensus grants and others that is looking to be deployed to software development. We've done about um, over a million dollars worth of work in the space with some of the top projects in the space. And uh, so that's, that's the sort of like Gitcoin portion of the, of, the, of the talk. I wanna end for my last five minutes by talking really briefly about six options that I'm really excited about that are fundamentally new to the blockchain internet that I think could change the way that open source is funded. So the first is worth stating the status quo is benevolent billionaires or corporations, which we rely on that they have hope for the common good 
that they're funding open source software and are working on things that provide value to the world and adhere to our values. And these can offer, uh, bill benevolent billionaires and corporations can offer millions in investment, but there's a capture problem. I think that I'm very lucky to be working at Consensus where uh, we've got Joe Lubin at the helm and he's got a fundamentally optimistic view of the world, but you can't rely on that from every billionaire that's out there. If you see any of these people walking down the street, ask them to fund your open source project. Boy, what a transition, huh? <laughs> uh, so this is Moloch DAO. You guys heard yesterday that they are a minimum viable DAO that uses donations and a membership tracking smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain to deploy grants to the ecosystem. So we're using the blockchain technology to deploy capital to people who are building blockchain technology, which has various levels of meta to it, but the tangible thing is that they're, they've raised $1 million uh, as of yesterday. And there's a governance mechanism here that allows you to rage quit if you're a member of this organization and you don't agree with how the funding is used. And I think it's quite an elegant solution that I mean, if you're out there, you put it together, kudos to you. Um, a new fundamentally different way of raising money for open source software was suggested by Vitalik about two months ago. Uh, I'll save you reading the tweet. He proposed a community norm, so it's opt out a bull if you want to, where we just include a one gig away fee to our wallets if we, uh, when we send a transaction on the network. And that one gig away fee in aggregate could provide two million per dollars per year in open source uh, sustainability. And I think that it's a thousand X use case of blockchain. We send thousands of transactions on the Ethereum network and, and it's just really exciting to see that that uh, we could support open source by just building in a community norm like that into, the, into our wallets. Uh, I am on the working group for something that's called Block Rewards Funding. Uh, first introduced formally in EIP 1789, uh, which I'm the author of, which would propose a 10% increase in the amount of block rewards that come off of the Ethereum blockchain. So basically, Every block that's minted on the Ethereum blockchain, every 15 seconds, there's two ETH that goes to miners in exchange for the work that's done to secure the Ethereum network. And so the idea here is, well, what if we have software developers who are writing the software that secures the Ethereum network? Why shouldn't we be paying them also? Well, the answer is that the miners' work is very verifiable. So when someone does work, we have this algorithm called proof of work, which says that they did the work and they should get paid. But with software development, the value proposition is inherently abstract and you can't measure it in 15 second chunks. Sometimes you can't even measure it in multi-month chunks, chunks because the value proposition for software is inherently abstract. I could think something's valuable. You don't think that something's valuable. There is no proof of work for block rewards. And so it's become sort of controversial. There's a governance problem here and we're working through that stuff uh, over the longer time frame in the block rewards funding group. If you wanna learn more, you can join our Telegram group and give us a piece of your mind. Uh, there's a project within the Gitcoin portfolio called Code Fund, which provides recurring passive revenue from non-tracking contextual ads. And basically the, the deal is that Code Fund bundles up ad inventory from DigitalOcean, from Rollbar, from Segment, uh, other clients that want to advertise to software developers, specifically blockchain software developers, and then allows you to put a piece of JavaScript on your documentation or your web presence, which if you're a maintainer of open source, you probably have a decent web presence, and allows you to monetize that, that audience that you have without selling them out. The key thing here is that it's ethical advertising. So if you're an open source software developer, you're a sophisticated internet consumer, you do not wanna sell out your audience to Facebook and Google to make a buck. CodeFund provides an option for you to monetize your open source software reputation without selling your audience and make almost as much as you would on Google and Facebook, which is a way out of this trap of open source not being funded. There's a project called OSCoin, which is basically what they did was they took PageRank, the algorithm that, you, that uses metadata in the web to figure out which websites are valuable and applies that to open source software. 
So, uh, so basically, in the web, if a link goes from one page to another, that's a vote that that page is important. And in open source, if your repo depends on another repo, then that's a vote that the upstream repo is important. So we can construct an OS rank for every single open source repo that exists in the web, and then we can distribute rewards programmatically to the top ones out there. And this could potentially, when they eventually release their token, be a million dollar distribution to open source software, and it could continue over time as they mint new blocks. The last project that I want to tell you about is Gitcoin Grants, which is basically a decentralized Patreon, which, is, which uses EIP-1337, the LEAT standard, to, uh, uh, the LEAT standard is basically the subscription standard on the Ethereum blockchain. And what we do with Gitcoin Grants is we allow you to set up a crowdfunding page where you can do, uh, you can raise money from the ecosystem and support your work in open source software in a recurring basis. So basically you raise $100 today and, and you'll have $100 next month also because it's recurring. We also provide this feature called uh, matching, which uses Glenn Miles' CLR match algorithm. It's basically, there's a lot of math to it, but basically it's the mathematically optimal way of matching donations to uh, funding public goods. So uh, if 100 people in this room each contribute $1 to a project A, and then 100 people, or, or sorry, one person contributes $100 to project B, Project A will get way more of the matching funds because of the CLR algorithm, and so it's, it's a really nice way of funding public goods that people actually care about in a broad base of support. So those are some of the examples that I wanted to tell you about that I hope give you a new hope for open source sustainability. And I'm really excited to explore this design space. I wanna end by talking a little bit about the history of the fight for the open internet. I'm 35 and a lot of people in this space are 22 and they don't remember the empire of Microsoft, but it could have gone a different way. We could all be on our XP phones, and if you're from Microsoft here, I love what Microsoft's been doing recently, but I'm glad we're not on our XP phones and using uh, XP coin to send digital money to each other. Um, I, see that you, I think that you see this proliferated in the Linux-based internet in which we've got a lot of branching and forking of different software repositories, and it's really amazing to see Linux be this organism that's evolved over time. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, is a really amazing example of open source software in that it is a new open source financial system. And just, wow, if we care about the future of the, hope of the open internet, having open source money, that is skin in the game that is a finger in the face of the old closed source Wall Street financial system, and, and I think it's the future of the open internet. Uh, I am playing in the space of open source jobs. This is what I call a mesh network of jobs. It's using real Gitcoin data. Each node in the network is a person, and each edge in the network is a financial transaction that went between the two nodes in the network. So a mesh network of jobs would be fundamentally peer-to-peer, -peer, and I think that's, that's super dope. We are in the middle of the future history of the fight for the open internet, and I hope that you will join me in building a world that is profitable, sustainable, and fundamentally moral for open source software developers. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy your lunch. Peace.